Hey, it's that game that Markiplier played that one time. Oh uh, yeah, I ignore the fact that I have the Golden Cauldron. Uh, I'm gonna get into the reason why in a second. I swear I have a life, just let me explain. Getting Over It is a game that came out in 2017, promptly made a splash online, and then disappeared forever, ironically like the game predicted. Everything's fresh for about six seconds, until some newer thing beckons, and we hit refresh. About a year ago, during the height of quarantine, I was searching through my Steam library for games that were on my bucket list that I hadn't beaten yet, and Getting Over It was one of them. <laughs> and my desire to get the Golden Cauldron, the last thing I wanted to do at the time, is a unique and personal tale to say the least. Here, let's hear what I had to say at the time. I think this game is fantastic and super interesting. The reason this game captured my attention and why I'm playing it right now is uh, there are three achievements for this game. Only three. And the first one is to reach the summit of the mountain. The second one is reach the summit of the mountain twice. And the third one is reach the summit of the mountain 50 times. And I'm at a, f a phase right now where I'm going for achievement hunting because I want to get some perfect games. And a year later, having secured 21 perfect games to my Steam account as of recording this, it's safe to say that I'm a bit of a completionist. And I think it's the definitive way to play a game because it forces you to gain a picture of the whole experience. I enjoyed games like Black Mesa, Half-Life 2, Resident Evil 2, and Bioshock, games that I experienced during the height of my completionist phase, on a first playthrough, but I really got to know the games on subsequent playthroughs to get all the achievements. I had to play the campaigns multiple times, do niche things that some people probably didn't even know existed, but as a result, I got to stay with the game for just a little bit longer, be absorbed in the experience and take away something from it. As good as a game like Resident Evil 2 was, I wouldn't have remembered it nearly as much if I hadn't had to play the campaign several times, several different ways to get different rewards and rankings, but I loved every second of it, because I love the game, and I love video games. The stories and adventures they take me on are invaluable. And while I'm not afraid of a steep challenge in achievement hunting, I'm also not a complete and utter dunce. And when you see an achievement like So Over It listed, some rationality has to kick in. I just wanted to beat the game once, or maybe twice since it's not that far off, but the 50 times was just not happening. But something happened when I played Getting Over It that genuinely surprised me, and completely sold me on the stupidly hard challenge that So Over It provided, because the game has a lot to say on a lot of levels. On the absolute most surface level facet, Getting Over It is a rage game with infuriating controls with the Australian guy that makes fun of you while you play. A selling point for some, but I'm a bit smarter than that, and I take it you guys are too. So, a bit deeper from there, Getting Over It explores the futility of modern media and how the culture of video game art is stale and super saturated now, a viewpoint that is reflected in how the world saw Getting Over It. While not for a lot of people, throughout the course of the game, Bennett Foddy offers some insight to the video game genre, although some people believe it to be pretentious coming from a nobody that made a hard game. At least, to the likes of Markiplier. Fuck you and your poetic bullshit. No one cares. No one cares. No- NO! Deeper still, and reminder, these are all feelings that I felt while playing on my journey to beating the game once. Getting over it also explores the difficulty of a steep challenge, and the entire thesis of the gameplay is an allegory for an insurmountable challenge that, at any moment, can be lost forever. The long, painful, and for some, rage-inducing journey to the top of the mountain is an exercise in patience and adaptivity, every puzzle getting over it presenting you with being different than the last. As you climb, you start to realize that the game has called your bluff. Your desire to keep climbing, inevitably fall, and then climb back up? That was a conscious decision that you made as a player. There's something driving you that made you keep going. Something that's inside all of us. It was a really surreal moment when Bennett Foddy told me, it feels like we're closer now, composer and climber, designer and user. You could have refused, but you didn't. There was something in you that was hidden, that chose to continue. I just took my hands off the keyboard and went, holy shit, this game is actually genius. Because the things that Bennett Foddy explores is what video games should be made for. I want to be deposited into some crazy place and have my perspective as a person and psyche influence what I do, how I react, and what I take away from the game as it presents its ideas to me. Bennett Foddy's visuals and cohesion with its geometric environment requires an intimate understanding of how the game is meant to be played. Practice makes perfect as getting over it teaches us in such an interesting way. It took me months, but I finally made it to the top. The extreme difficulty of the challenge made me empathize and respect what Bennett Foddy had done, and as his monologue took a more personal turn, addressing me as a player and how much what I had done meant to him, 
I gotta admit, I was emotionally blindsided. It's a game that revealed a new part of me, the part that made it to the summit, and I wanted to explore that further. So I pressed new game and I did it again, learning more on my ascent. I got faster and faster, understanding how the game worked more and more, revering how much I simply enjoyed the act of climbing. Every time I got to the top, I couldn't wait to climb again, be taken on an emotional journey with Bennett Foddy where, at the beginning, he's distant and preachy, his attention waning from the thesis of the game, but as the game requires more attention and energy from me as a player, Bennett takes it more seriously, gets closer to his mic, and says some real shit. It's a game with a lot of heart and a lot to be said. And if you consider 50 wins completely stupid and impossible, try it yourself. Climb the mountain. Make an effort. You can take my word for it. Every time you climb again, it gets a little easier. And if the mainstream appeal of this game scared you off, I promise you this is a game to never be forgotten. And is number 10 on my list of my top 5 favorite games of all time. No joke. It's a condensed journey with its value completely determined by how much you as a person are willing to invest. If you're Markiplier, you'll curse Bennett Foddy's name every time you go to sleep, but if you're looking for something more, getting over it will give. It's a game that got in my head and rocked my view on insanely difficult games. All because it actually has something to say.